Wang is taking a day trip to Switzerland, to the canton of Bern. She and her husband are going to visit the family who looked after her 60 years ago, when she was evacuated from Frankfurt. The Red Cross put us on a train in Frankfurt. It was all very exciting. All these Red Cross nurses and doctors were running around. People were shouting on loudspeakers. Then there were all these parents with crying children. But at some point, there we were, sitting in the train. Some of the children slept on the seats, some of them curled up on the floor. I fell asleep right away, and I only woke up in the morning when we got to Basel. That was in 1947, and Edith was nine years old. She was picked for evacuation because she'd recently suffered a bad case of pleurisy. We were all skinny little things. None of the children on that train looked well nourished. Many were sort of emaciated because they were so underfed. They were sent to homes and nursed back to health. Edith was sent to a farm. After years of deprivation, she finally got enough to eat. But most importantly, her host family welcomed her with open arms. She went to school there, soon picked up Swiss German and made lots of new friends. She stayed in touch with her guest family and their children and grandchildren ever since, returning to Switzerland every year to help with the potato harvest and to look after the cows. When she returned to Germany in 1949, history was being made. West Germany held its first free election since the Nazi period. Edith remembers it felt like a different country. She recalls her teacher comparing West Germany to a car, which until then had been driven by the Americans. They'd moved over and Adenauer had taken the wheel. But there was still an American sitting in the passenger seat, making sure he did everything right. And then after a while, they let him drive the car by himself. That was how she explained the situation to us. Edith still feels at home in Buren zum Hof in Switzerland, even though so much has changed in the last 60 years. She doesn't remember feeling homesick. What she does remember is her first meal with her new family and her first encounter with Emmental cheese. I was starving, and I couldn't wait to eat. But after two or three spoonfuls, I started finding these long strings of cheese in the soup, and I had no idea what I was supposed to do with them. I looked at everyone else, and they all were looking at me and wondering what was wrong with me and why I wasn't eating. And I started crying. But that was the only time I ever shed any tears. Edith's host family never held her nationality against her. She was always welcome at their table, year after year. When I went to school, when I was a child, we never talked about this time. We never mentioned the war. Edith has nothing but happy memories of the time she spent on the farm in Switzerland. She still feels grateful to her host family and calls herself one of the Swiss children. She even made her husband swear an oath before she'd agree to marry him. She made one condition. I had to promise that I would go with her to Switzerland two or three times a year to see her Swiss family. I didn't have a choice. I'm the obedient type. So I said yes. As a child, Edith had returned to Frankfurt reluctantly. It was a city devastated by the war. But by 1949, the first glimmers of hope had begun to appear. I started to think the city wasn't so bad after all. I think something in me had healed, thanks to Switzerland and the time I spent there. I realized how life could be. It gave me hope on some subconscious level. I knew that life would go on and that everything would be all right. For Edith herself and for Germany.